welcome to Cicada Innovations, Australia's home of deep tech. My name's Sally Ann Williams and I'm the CEO here. We're on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and we want to pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Cicada Innovations is housed in this beautiful 120 year old heritage building behind me. Inside this building there's over 40 companies employing 450 people solving the world's most pressing problems through science and engineering. And today you're going to get to join me and the team behind me to see what's happening under the hood. Alright, come on, let's go! One of the first companies we're going to chat to today is Speedex. One of the largest residents in the building, they were born at the end of the global financial crisis when the two founders were made redundant. Doing amazing work in health and wellbeing, I can't wait for you to meet them. Let's go have a chat. Alyssa, I'm so excited to talk to you today and hear a little bit more about Speedex. Tell us a little bit about your technology and what it is that Speedex is doing. Well, Speedex develops innovative DNA technologies that we can really use to address unmet medical needs. So our technologies are ideal for diagnostic tests that we use for infectious diseases or oncology. And with our tests, we're really trying to provide more information. So we're giving information about treatment and also guiding treatment. So making sure people get the correct treatment the first time, reducing the time of um, patient management, maybe being in hospital and getting cured quicker. 2020 has definitely been the year of health globally and COVID, has that been a challenge for you? Has that been something you're involved with? I, I mean, I think you know, this 2020 has definitely been a challenge for everybody in, in some particular form. For us in particular, like our industry diagnosis, we've really risen to the challenge of trying to provide tests to help you know, manage this pandemic. We've had to increase the size of our office space and lab space to be able to do that to meet the demand um, of the diagnostic test. So yeah, we've really had some amazing developments and working um, closely you know, with Cicada and other government bodies to, to help during this time. I love it. You're a global company operating out of this building, manufacturing, doing research, doing diagnostics, really doing it all. What's 2021 hold for you? We're really excited for 2021 to broaden our scope globally. Um, we really need to grow our current footprint in terms of uh, people doing the research as well as people manufacturing and producing the test kit. So 2021 will be big for us as we take on more challenges, moving into a whole new field of respiratory illnesses and but also still managing our current portfolio where we're really tackling antibiotic resistance. Congratulations. I'm really excited about 2021, producing things that are actually having such a positive impact on people and health and well-being. So you're awesome. Thanks, Sally. <laughs> you guys are awesome too. Thanks to Cicada for all the support and allowing us to grow and supporting. So it's not just support in space, it's actually support in how you actually go from a startup to a scale-up. So we've been really lucky to be based here in Cicada and to be able to have so, so many amazing people to work with. From one of our oldest residents to one of our newest, Prescian joined us at the height of the pandemic, a spin-out from global construction giant Lang O'Rourke. They use artificial intelligence to keep workers safe on job sites. Let's go have a chat with them. So Kieran, I'm really delighted to have a conversation with you and chat about what prescian has been doing. You moved into the building during COVID, but what is it that you guys do? What is it that's so exciting about your work? So Prescian is an AI vision company. Uh, at a very high level, AI vision allows us to see objects, understand what they are, and then do something. And that's enormously broad, and the technology has enormously broad applications. We are focused on safety for heavy industries. Construction, mining, logistics, warehousing, and agriculture are really critical, uh, but unfortunately remain dangerous. So by far the leading cause of serious injury and death is being struck by a vehicle or crushed in between an object. So we have a moral and economic obligation to do better. So Blindsight, our first product, effortlessly protects workers in dynamic environments. It's a simple standalone system that can be installed on mobile plant and fixed infrastructure. So basically what you're saying is you're saving lives on job sites for workers to be able to go home safely to their families. Exactly. That's awesome. So 2020, how's it been for you? For a lot of businesses it's been really challenging, but has there been a COVID impact for, for Prescient? We've actually been really fortunate. We spun off from Lang and Rock in 2020 and we've been frantically designing and building Blindsight, which will be launched late this year. We're also uh, very lucky that the governments in response to the pandemic are increasing spending on infrastructure, which is obviously the sector uh, where most of our customers are operating. It sounds like 2021 is going to be a really big year. What are the things that you're most focused on in 2021? So launching Blindsight in Australia and also in Europe further developing our AI and various features 
and towards the end of the year we're also looking to launch another product to further help the heavy industries. I think uh, what you're doing from a hardware and software perspective in job sites is really critical. So thank you, it's really cool to see what you're doing. Thank you. Today we're going to be speaking to Loop Plus. These two ladies at Loop Plus are sisters and they are a great example of how good ideas can come from anywhere. They set out to solve a problem for a wheelchair user in their family. Initially, they went out to the market and had a look for a solution and couldn't find one. So what did they do instead? They built it. And we're gonna go have a chat to them right now. Kath and Claire, let's go. Hi Kath, hi Claire, thanks for joining us today. Can you please tell us about how Loop Plus is a game changer for wheelchair users? My son has a spinal cord injury, so the product we've developed is around um, a very personal need and finding that um, all of the, the problems we were facing with his everyday life and health management, then yeah, coming to Kath and saying, well, how do, how do we solve these? And uh, we've, we've come up with a product that we think is helping to do that. Yeah, Loop Plus is a, um, basically a health tracker for, for wheelchair users. It's a positive feedback loop between the wheelchair users and their clinicians and, and their circle of care to allow that visibility every day to in influence and inform um, their behaviours and, um, and habits. So it connects to a mobile app and a, and a dashboard in the, in the cloud. So it's kind of like a, a Fitbit fee bum. <laughs> Do any of you actually have a medical device background or medical background? So we don't have a medical or hardware um, background. We started out building a, um, a prototype our, ourselves. Then we were able to prove a hypothesis that gave Claire that, that um, visibility would inform behaviour change and uh, from there hired some, yeah, some amazing talent um, including Phil and, and Chris initially to help us to build that initial prototype. And how has Cicada helped you along with that journey? Through Cicada we were able to answer a lot of the questions we had in terms of uh, the product development and all the regulatory questions that come along with the medical device. So what's on for 2021? Selling our products. <laughs> yeah, really, really going to market. And again, what that means is, um, you know, distribution. Um, you know, what is it that's that sales funnel for us? Which markets are we going into? This period of COVID has, has been actually quite uh, insightful in looking at how can we access markets that are in the US or, or elsewhere and say, well, what do we need to be providing sure. to have that remote um, ability to, to scale the product? Thanks for joining us today, ladies, and good luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you. I'm super excited to introduce you to our next company, Invertigro. Their indoor vertical farming solutions have applications not only on Earth, but in space. Let's go and have a chat with co-founder Paul Millett. Hey Paul, what's Invertigo all about and what's your big vision? So at Invertigo, co-founder Ben Lee and myself set out with a mission to feed the world the smarter way. We're building a system to grow more with less. With this hardware you can see behind me, our modular growing system called the Inverticube. It allows people to grow in almost any environment and we can go vertically as well. So we can build to literally any scale. And when you see these Invertiqs all over the world, <laughs> So we've already got our inverter wall product and our inverter wall is already um, on display and actually working uh, with, with our first customer. And this inverter cube will come uh, through 2021. Fantastic. And, and I've heard also that you might have applications for the cubes in space. How does that work? We actually got approached by uh, an all-female Sensoria Mars mission, mm -hmm. which was over in, in Hawaii earlier in the year, so that we could uh, put our technology in and, and feed the astronauts in a, in a Mars simulation. The reason we were selected is because our technology is so energy efficient, water efficient, it's enclosed, and it means that um, the astronauts could focus on what they needed to do and not worry about the plants they took care of themselves. 2020 has been an absolutely uh, incredible year and you've kicked so many goals along the way. So what's on the horizon for you? We've had some fantastic support from investors and really excited to, uh, to say that we, we go into 2021 really well placed to get the product to market and excited to, to also be going for Series A investment in 2021. Oh, well, Paul, it's been an absolute privilege to support you along your journey and uh, can't wait to see what's in store for next year. Thanks so much. Thank you, Rick. Hi, 
I'm Melissa, Program Manager at Sakata Innovations. One of my favourite things about working here is getting to know cool founders like Alex. Hi Alex, thanks for joining us. Thank you, ma'am. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your technology and about your company? So basically what we do is we make materials that change the wavelength of light, like sunlight, into a light that's more beneficial for the plant to grow. As you can see, this is our materials which it's a luminescent material, so we have the lights comes in into here and we change that light into this more red color. So this red light is more beneficial for plant to grow. You are improving the natural sunlight, which is uh, free. You probably seen it in uh, vertical farmings and farmings that use LED. And we do the same thing. We want to have that kind of effects that they have, but instead of using electricity, we're just using sunlight. What's the impact of that? How does your solution benefit the ag tech industry? So I think the ag tech industry and the food in general, we need to increase our crop production to feed the world. And we need to do that with the limited resources that we have. So we look back into what is the basics of plant growth and we try to improve sunlight, which is the most renewable resources. Uh, so I heard that you've been collaborating with another one of our residents here at the incubator. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. That's one of the reasons why I joined the Growler program and part of the Cicada community. We all have different capabilities, different facilities, we're developing different things, so it's really nice to fit with each other to solve the same problems. So your next step is to go global. Anything you want to tell us about that? We've been doing trials, so we, our trials have been really promising at a small scale, so we need to go to the commercial scale to make sure that that's also work and hopefully we will validate really soon and then go to the market. Thanks so much for joining us, Alex. We're really excited to see where you go next. Thank you, Mel. It's time to go all the way to LA, well virtually at least, as we catch up with our GrowLab alumni, the CEO of Fluorosat, Anastasia Volkova. Hi, Anastasia. Hi, Sally Ann. It's great to see you, Anastasia. I'm really looking forward to hearing how 2020 has been for you. But first of all, tell us about Fluorosat. Tell us about what the company is and what do you do and why should everybody get excited? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Celia, for having me. And it's fantastic to be virtually present. It really uh, is talking to how COVID has been treating all of us. But in terms of Fluorosat, Look, we're an agricultural technology company enabling crop consultants, those advisors that help farmers make decisions, to make better decisions informed by data that is local to their field and that is scientifically valid. So Fluorosat is all about deriving the insights that can help our crop production to be more sustainable, efficient and profitable. Food and feeding the world is a huge challenge that we face. How has agriculture and food been changing? Where do you see that going and what does this mean for consumers? The consumers have taken a more active role in supporting the producers. And I think if we start treating agriculture not just like an industry that needs to produce more with less, but actually the industry that cares for the landscape, that cares for the environment, we might all start to grok the concept of the farmers being the stewards of the land and invest our money where our mouth is. <laughs> I love that. That's such an important point that you make. So tell us about what some of the big wins of 2020 been for you. Our product uh, won the AgTech Data Analytics Solution of the Year, uh, which is fantastic. We've already experienced customer demand and made our first deals in the space with some of the largest food processors who want to have more visibility in their supply chain. And this is what Fluorosat is naturally finding itself providing. So we're going to embrace that mission and embodiment of that role that we have in the market and really invest even more into that. I love what you're doing for people and for sustainability and for the planet. So thank you. It's awesome to catch up with you. Thank you so much for having me, Sally Ann. We're talking to Nuclone next, another company with a large laboratory footprint here at Cicada Innovations. Nuclone is a biopharmaceutical company developing more accessible and affordable medications to those patients who need it most around the world. Let's go have a chat to them now. Thank you for joining us, Noel. Can you tell us a bit about what Nuclone is doing at Cicada Innovations? Well, Nuclone is a biopharmaceutical company. We're making biosimilars of therapeutic proteins 
and these are copies of the originator uh, therapeutic proteins that are on the market now and they're soon to be off patent. So our manufacturing process allows these drugs to be very cost effective to all patients who have less capacity to pay for these very expensive drugs. We have a portfolio of 21 biosimilar uh, products for all types of disease indications like cancer, autoimmune diseases. Our first drug targets breast cancer and pancreatic cancer. And just as of last year, we've completed our second successful phase one trial on a biosimilar of Stellara, which is an autoimmune disease. So we're very hopeful that they will be able to complete the drug in time for the patent expiry in 2024. What are New Clone's main priorities come 2021? Well, 2021 is fast approaching. Now we've had a deadline at the end of December of this year and we've met that deadline. What we're planning on next year is our global phase three for our biosimilar candidate of Stellara. So Noelle, New Clone's been here for 10 years. What is it like to be a part of the Cicada community? It's a, it's a great community for entrepreneurs. We can share our success stories and we can share our heartbreaks as well. I like to have some other life science uh, companies here that I, I chat with and hear their success stories. Very happy to hear about them and uh, maybe get some mentoring from some of them as well who have some, you know, some good successes. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thank it's you. really wonderful to chat to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. This building we're standing in is closely linked to Australia's industrial past. It's where our first steam locomotive engines were built. Continuing the tradition is the company we're going to meet next, which is Telematica Corporation. They're supporting our railways into the future, making them safer, more reliable and efficient. Come on, let's meet Telematica. Telling us more is Business Development Manager for Telematica, Dermot Ryan. Hi Dermot, do you like to take us through your tech? Sure, uh, our technology at Telematica is based around asset condition monitoring. So we provide our clients with information that they wouldn't normally get about their overhead wires and how they're performing. We use telecommunications to transport data to cloud hosted service. The end user is sitting at their desk, they get a text or an SMS or they log onto the platform and then they can visually see, watch footage and, and look at data of what we would call impact events. Okay. for alerts. And yep. what type of traction have you got? So currently we have clients in Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, Adelaide, New Zealand, in Europe and expanding into North and South America as well. And, and it's a technology that um, commuters don't see. Uh, what's the impact of the technology? So the impact of the technology is that it provides safer and more reliable railways. So as a passenger or commuter, what that means for you is you're less likely to be stuck on the platform with the train uh, and torn down wires. We try and improve the reliability and safety of the railways. What's planned for 2021? So we have quite a bit of uh, backfill with work, which is, is a nice thing to have, of yes. course. Um, and also looking at expanding our local and international presence. Dermot, thanks so much for sharing. Um, it sounds like you've got an awesome year ahead. Thank thanks. you very much. So like Loop Plus, Neuromersive are MedLab alumni here at Cicada Innovations. They're revolutionising stroke rehabilitation therapy using virtual reality and they're doing this in a way that makes it more fun and engaging for the patients. Let's go have a chat to Neuromersive. Hi Angel, thank you for joining us today. Can you please tell us a bit about your technology? Yeah, thanks for having me uh, Tavika. And, um at Neuromersive we're developing a virtual reality based solution for stroke rehab. The solution um, also extends beyond uh, stroke to other brain injuries. It's a big problem, uh, it impacts millions of people and one of the issues or problems we've identified is the current level of rehab is simply not engaging enough for people to stick to it for long enough to really get the outcomes. And so our solution uses the benefits of immersive virtual reality and combines that with existing uh, sensory inputs like haptics and functional electrical stimulation that that already have been proven to have clinical benefits and brings them together into a single unified solution that the patients can use in clinic as well as at home. So what is it about virtual reality that makes the therapy so successful? When you put people in immersive VR, like a solution like this, and like ours, they are fully disconnected. And that has a big impact on the brain. It's known that it enhances the release of dopamine in the brain and dopamine is closely linked to a concept called neuroplasticity. 
So when, when people have brain injuries, your plasticity is the key factor we're looking for to enhance recovery. So you've come a long way. How has Cicada supported you on this journey? Yeah, so Cicada um, through the MedLab program has been pivotal in our success to date. Um, I think when we joined MedLab, we didn't even think we were a medical advice company. And through all the mentorship and the connections with the mentors and the funding, I think we've, um, we've discovered that the medical advice, uh, being a medical advice company, has its merits. Fabulous. Some awesome goals and some awesome support. Thank you for your time today. Thanks, Samika, and uh, thanks for having me. Next up is LX Group. They are making it their mission to be at the forefront of the next generation of IoT. Let's go and have a chat with Simon. Here to tell us a bit more is LX's Simon Ward. Hi Simon. Hi Brit. 2020 has undoubtedly been a challenging year, but one with some surprising upsides. 2020 certainly has been a tough year. Uh, within our design house, our portfolio, we've seen a lot of R&D companies or R&D spend deferred following COVID. So that has meant that we've looked to redeploy resources that would otherwise be developing projects and products for, for customers uh, and redeploy those resources onto our own product line. So that's given us an opportunity really to roll out an enormous number of new products into next year. And, and Simon, can you tell us a little bit about your product line? So one of the exciting projects that we're working on is uh, AgTech, working with Longanong College and Skillshare down in Victoria in Horsham, where they've got over a thousand hectares, which they're looking to monitor and connect with the cloud using IoT. So the students down there get to interface with the very latest of technology, are able to access data from over 250 sensors across the farmland there and really optimise their approach to farming. Smart farms are the way of the future, aren't they? Exactly. It's an efficient way to farm. And uh, what's planned for 2021? We've got some exciting news coming through in, in the medical device space. IoT and space connectivity, so that is communicating through satellites and um, what else? Explosives. <laughs> Stay tuned. You guys never cease to amaze me. All the best with the new year. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Britt. So I'm really excited about this next company. They recently did a deployment at the University of Sydney with their smart solar powered ventures. Let's go check out Julian. Andrew, welcome to the building. Congratulations on joining Julian as CEO. I'm really excited to have a chat with you and hear a little bit more about what you're excited about for 2021. Yeah, thanks Sally. You're right, I've only just joined and I have to say I'm so impressed with the team and what they've managed to achieve so far. Uh, Julian was founded in 2015. We came here to Cicada in May 2019. Our goal is to help the transition to renewables by developing a new novel zinc bromide battery which addresses many of the problems with the existing battery technologies. So Andrew, tell me about 2021. In 2021, what we're hoping to do is work with our partners here and overseas to begin mass manufacture of these products. Kerry, I'm so excited to have a chat with you. I've heard about these smart solar powered benches that have been deployed at the University of Sydney. Tell me a little bit more about them and why should I be getting so excited? We started working with them mid last year. They were looking for ways to contribute to sustainability and safety on campus, particularly in areas that aren't made connected. <laughs> The smart benches collect energy during the day from the sun and during the night they provide a really inviting space for students to meet and collaborate into the evening. It's one of a series of pilots that we have planned for Endure and at the moment they are working beautifully on campus. They look great, so get out and have a look. Great opportunity for people to come together and collaborate. Absolutely. Andrew, tell me, how's Julian different? What is it that's so disruptive about your technology? Ours is a zinc bromide non-flow battery, and what that delivers is a totally non-flammable product. The raw materials are abundant and recyclable. Our battery will more and more be the technology of choice. Sounds like this is actually the battery for the future, and certainly the battery that we want in Australia. Thanks very much, Sally, we hope so too. Last but not least is Calumino, a company that's responded to COVID in the most meaningful and impactful way. No spoilers though, let's hear it from Matt Horgan, the Business Development Manager at Calumino. 
2020 has been quite a year for Kalumina. Please tell us about it. So Kalumina, we develop thermal sensors, uh, and our type of thermal sensor is the only one of its kind in the world. So a very useful quality of our sensor is its excellent stability and, importantly, its accuracy. We realise with the correct implementation we could develop a very accurate human temperature screening device that would measure someone's face temperature at a distance with an extremely high precision. Uh, if you can measure someone's face temperature and specifically elevated temperature, you can indicate whether that person may have a fever, a fever being the most common symptom of COVID-19. Within less than three months, we had conceived, designed, tested and built a working human temperature screening device, which we call the Rapid Thermo Screener, or RTS. And yeah, since then, we've sold hundreds around the world, around Australia and internationally. Outside of COVID, what other applications do you have for your technology? Yeah, so there are many other applications and most revolve around human detection and human activity detection in, in spaces, so say in commercial office buildings or in hospitals, for example. So this is a wider angle lens. You put it up in the middle of a ceiling and it will detect kind of the whole region of a room. So you can detect objects like laptops um, and other objects that emit heat. You can do people counting. Uh, you can even do fall detection in aged care uh, environments and in hospitals. Uh, so yeah, this is two, two examples of, of different implementations for our technology. What are we going to see next year? Our key business goal, I'd say, for 2021 is continuing and completing the automated production of our sensors. The plan is to have thousands and then into tens of thousands of the core sensors uh, produced per month by the end of 2021. Matt, thanks so much for sharing your journey and we can't wait to see what's in store for Calumino during 2021. Thanks, Britt. Thank you.